The Deal News Podcast, episode 241 for January 10th. We're back. And it's January 9th. So let me do that again. (laughs) (laughs) The Deal News Podcast, episode 241 for January 9th. We're back. (laughs) I don't know, doing that twice in a row. I don't know. All right, I am joined by Lewis and Dan. Hey, fellas. Hey, hey guys. How's it going? Good. We've survived uh, an apocalypse, uh, Christmas, yeah. and the new right. year. Right, right. We made it through. Made it through. Every, did everyone? Uh, did everyone survive intact? You all all right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you all survive the New Year's Eve experience this year. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know either. Uh, it was, it was my birthday. Oh, yeah, that's oh, right. Congratulations so, and happy birthday. Happy belated, Dan. Despite Thank our you. best efforts, you have survived the <laughs> year. <I know. laughs> and, and since it's better to give than receive, uh, I've decided to go ahead and send the gift-giving season to well into the new year, so you've got time <laughs> to send uh, presents my way. Order to deliver our gifts <laughs> oh, thank just you. one day. It's the <laughs> gifts that keep on giving. <laughs> yes. What we should do. Well, yeah, congratulations. I will not uh, ask a gentleman how old he is, but... Uh, <laughs> Whatever. I will I will just say congratulations. <laughs> I'm Once still being alive? Every year you've been alive, so... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the astute listeners can count. No, thank you. Yeah. And, Louis, yourself, how is the New Year treating you? Good, pretty cool, pretty cool. I ended up not buying a tablet though. No, what? Not at all, yeah, though. yeah, yeah. Well, I was really ho- I was really hoping that Amazon uh, would discount the Paperwhite or at least bundle it with something, right, and they yeah, never did. They never did. They never did. And then I was like, all right, you know, maybe I'll wait a little while. CES is around the corner. Let me just pause for a little while. And th- that's that's the trouble with me. Like I'm always like, oh, you know, this is around the corner. So let me wait a little while. You know, that's around the corner. Like, oh. A Swiss right. has a press event around right. the corner, and that ends up freezing me, and I am, I am never buying anything. <laughs> well, I, I'm the same way. I mean, it took me, like, years to buy a new cell phone. You know you know that. But yeah. uh, as for this tablet tobacco, I, I don't know if I'm more disappointed in you or Amazon. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Both. You for not buying it, Amazon for not discounting it. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, you're right. CES is right around the corner. In fact, it started today, right? The, right. Yep. The, right, right. The, today's, the day of no, our recording. Monday. Started Monday. Monday. Oh, right. Today's Tuesday. Oh, I've been good. sick yeah, for what day it is anymore. Yeah. Uh, I got that flu thing that's been going around. Everyone, get your flu shot. You don't want this one. Just a pro <laughs> tip there from someone. I mean, I lost two days of work, and I bought like $40 worth of tissues. So from a consumer standpoint, buying buying the flu shot is probably your cheap option to get Could out be. of doing that. This year, um, but yeah, uh, lead into our talk about CES that's happening. It started, as you said, on Monday uh, or yesterday for us, two days ago for the listeners or future listeners four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about CES 2013. If this recording makes it into the future, and you're listening back, hoping to know what's coming out that year, but uh, so what? Uh, what? What are the big things that we've uh, started to see coming out of uh, of CES? I I've been, I've been skimming the news, and uh, you know, I, I hate to say it, but uh, this year CES just isn't grabbing me like it once did. I flip through, and it's just like another TV, another TV, another right. TV. Yeah. It's like a big, it's like a big TV debut event. It's become all about home theater. I mean, which I guess is kind of cool, but like you know, sure. it seems like the big push this year is 4K Ultra HD, mm, and I, right. I'm actually a little bit shocked at how much they're pushing that. You know, so it looks like. Ultra HD is the new 3D. I mean, you have Sharp, mm-hmm. Panasonic, Samsung, Sony. Everyone, everyone now has an Ultra, Ultra, Ultra HD mm-hmm. uh, TV. So it looks like that's going to be the next thing. So they're going with calling it 4K at this point. Um, I, when we were there years ago, the first one that they were showing off was the 2K 4K, they called it. I guess they didn't want to confuse people. <laughs> right. <laughs> and just calling it... <laughs> So they're just going to call it 4K, even though they're not really uh, 4,000 pixels in, in any of the specifications, right? It's like 380 something by 1,800 something, or it's like 3,800 something pixels by whatever. So they're rounding up. That sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> now, the question: Do they have any media out there to support it? I mean, any of the the? It's not Blu-ray. 
No, they don't. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, sort of. Here's here's one of the big announcements from today with Sony. Um, Sony pretty much said like they have an entire lineup of 4K TVs, and starting I think this summer they said um, they're going to debut a video service that's going to pump 4K um, quality video to the to your TV essentially. So really? it looks like they're doing something about it. And you know, I was I was also reading up a little bit on like how all this 4K stuff works, and I guess technically. Today's Blu-rays, today's Blu-ray discs, do have enough capacity for a uh, 4K movie, but mm. you know, no one has taken advantage of that advantage of that yet. They don't know how to, whatnot. You mm. know, I don't know exactly how that's going to work out. But um, but technically, I mean, you know, Sony has the new video service coming out, right. and the way the TVs work is that they're gonna pretty much is it they're gonna upscale. They're, not, they're gonna mm -hmm. upscale. So you throw it like a 1080p mm. or 1080 you know, whatever, 720p feed, and it'll upscale it to a... Right. Yeah, I wonder how good that's going to look, because along with this uh, announcement, Sony also uh, announced that they would be doing, like, what they're calling them, like, 4K mastered Blu-rays, so they're not actually a 4K movie on Blu-ray disc, but right. they're done in a better, in a way that will be upscaled better to a 4K right. television. Which it's like I think the way it works right now on a, I think on the Blu-ray disc, you know, they have a movie on Blu-ray, the movie doesn't take up the entire Blu-ray disc. Right. So you still have a lot of just like for lack of a better word, just storage space on there. Right. So I guess, you know, they have to kind of reinvent the way they use the disc and then the disc will have more info right. so you'll get a better picture. You might not get a full 4K, I don't know, but you'll get yeah. a better picture than... Yeah, they're than, saying that it's not going to be full 4K, at least not on these remastered discs, but I think right. this is kind of a stopgap measure for them if they want to push the 4K stuff because now they'll say, well, we can release these Blu-ray 4K master discs so that you can watch on your regular TV and they also upscale really nicely to our 4K TV if you buy that. That's, that's exactly. kind of smart of them. But it, it kind of smacks of the old gold mastered CDs. Do you remember? Right. Where, like, I remember those. The sound <laughs> fidelity difference was supposed to be incredible. And Which it, it wasn't. It really wasn't. It was no. just, you were just paying for some gold uh, plating <laughs> on, a, on, a, on a CD, you know. Um, I mean, of, of all the the companies that are pushing this 4K stuff at, at CES, the only one that kind of makes some sense to me is Sony's, seeing as how they also own Sony Pictures. You right. Know, that they would have all of these movies that they could, you know, I mean, they bought Columbia, right? It's now Sony Columbia. Mm, so they have all those weird. old movies and everything. So they'd be able to offer this. But Panasonic comes in and they're like, we have a 4K TV. Good luck with the content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're very welcome, America. Also, there's no standard for 4K um, right. the you know resolutions. There's no exact standard. Uh, there's no infrastructure companies. for it yet. Right. Basically, that's you the know? bottom line. There's no infrastructure for it yet. And I mean, technically speaking, we don't have 3D content yet either. You know. Right. I mean, and look and look how long 3D has been in the market. So you know, so factor in now the push for 4K. At least now at 4K, Sony's saying like, "Hey guys, this summer we're gonna have a service. There's gonna be something out there. You know, we're gonna have these Blu-rays as well. You know, so I guess they thought ahead a little bit. But I mean, it's still gonna take a long while for this to be adopted. And you know, now have any of you guys seen a 4K set in person? Yeah, we and saw them at CES. Yeah, did you? And was it that exciting? For me, I, I think it really, really popped out. I mean, like, you could, really? you could sort of tell, yeah. You, you could tell you're not looking at a normal, you know, at a normal 1080p, uh, whatever, feed. But at the same time, we were looking at it at CES. You know, you have, I'm right. sure that TV was, like, pumped up to, like, you know, whatever. Right. So, exactly. you know. Yeah, it was the one that was showing, like, the Tokyo skyline or something, right? right? Yeah. It was that like, and just, it was, it was... It didn't wasn't a static image, but it wasn't like anything. It was like, it was like a moving right? photo almost, kind of like a moving photo. Sorry. Yeah, I mean it was very clear. It was very nice, but I remember at the time thinking like, "Well, I I want to see what it can do." Like, I mean, right. yeah, it's neat that it looks like I'm looking out of a window, but video wise, you know, yeah, like, what's you know, it gonna look like with a video? Yeah. Right. I need something else, you know, and and, and it was really hard to tell. Uh, what a movie would look like on it, you know. I'm sure it's gonna look fine, you know, whatever. But I'm I'm still of the 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 school where it's like I just want to watch the movie. I don't really care too much about fidelity of it, you know. Like if if the stream that I'm watching Netflix on drops down to SD and it looks a little blurry, I'm like, eh, you yeah, know, it's okay. Right, you right. still get the idea. Yeah. 
You know, so that that stuff never bothered me. To so to look and, and see something in 4K, I wasn't like, wow, you know, right. <laughs> making that exact face. Yeah, <laughs> mm, yeah. I don't like so, the way my face looks without this beard. I go on. <laughs> so so based on this, are you guys even remotely kind of sort of thinking about buying one? Maybe way too expensive. Um, I think yeah. the prices are going to be like what well, a couple of them. The majority of them haven't debuted prices, but I think if I'm not mistaken, it was either Sony or Samsung who had. I think it might have been Sony. They have a 4K 55 inch OLED TV mm. that's twelve thousand. So, yeah, I, mean, I think I saw pretty... a Tiger Direct deal for uh, for one that was like either twelve ninety nine or thirteen thousand with a coupon or something. Wow. Yeah, that's with a coupon. A, yeah, with a coupon. After rebate, after fifty dollar yeah. rebate. <laughs> that's a steal, seeing as how um, Sony is selling an eighty four inch for twenty five thousand. So yeah. you know, like half as much. Of course, you get a lot less real estate. For it. But it's OLED too. So, yeah. Right, right, right. yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this thing. Um, this all this really means to me is that we went from you know uh, uh, HD TV to a push to 3D TV, and now we're saying, well, let's move over here and do 2K, 4K. I will still continue to call it 2K, 4K. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's do 4K, and then once that takes off, then we'll try and push 4K 3D. You know, right. so there's always going to be like this, this, uh, the sawtooth movement from like the def to 3D to a new definition to 3D. They already, know. um, someone I forgot what company at CES I was reading. They debuted an 8K TV. So I mean, like, when does really? it end? I yeah. mean, when is this going to end? <laughs> I don't think it will. You know, it's like I mean. Just like anything else in the in the world, there's always going to be a market for the latest and greatest and newest right, and right. more powerful, more pixels, more processing, whatever. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I don't think it'll stop. Well, even even when we do get the uh, the Back to the Future video wall, <laughs> yeah. I don't think I don't think it'll stop there either. It'll be like uh, you know they'll go move right into holographic and who who knows? Yeah. See, the thing for me is that. It, like look at the look at Apple. You know they have their Retina displays, and and that's kind of them saying, look, this is good enough because you shouldn't be closer than a foot to your screen anyway. And at more than a foot, it's indistinguishable. You can't see the pixels anyway. So it's right. like photo real. You know. So at some point, shouldn't the TV manufacturers say, look, at five feet away from our screens, no matter how big they are, you're not going to be able to see pixels. Let's stop. <laughs> right. Right. You know? right. 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 It's like, yeah, you could probably cram more pixels in, but you shouldn't be sitting that close to the television anyway right. in order to see them, you know, except maybe, I don't know, in like some specific applications for learning tools or whatever where you want to get really close up to the screen or something. So are you saying that our parents were right when they were yelling at us not to sit so close to the TV? <laughs> exactly. And it's sort not of. because you'll hurt your eyes. It's just because you'll just see the pixels. And what do you care about right. the pixels for? Just Some of the TVs, I think it was Samsung, uh, another push. So like the push from CES for TVs is obviously 4K. Um, a little bit of a push on OLED from Sam Samsung and LG. And I believe it was Samsung who also has is pushing... Uh, which we call it webcams um, in their TVs. So mm -hmm. the minute you turn on your TV, the TV will recognize your face and it'll maybe give you like your favorite apps or mm -hmm. your favorite TV guide, your favorite channels. And it'll it'll be like it'll almost be like turning on an Xbox console, or like a Wii console. Well, you'll have your own little avatar, you know, on your TV. Sure. And the minute it recognizes your face, it's like, oh, you know, this is Dan. This is Jeff. His favorite channels are, you know, this, mm -hmm. that, that. Which I don't know if I like that to be honest. I just yeah. want to turn the TV on, you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't want people sitting in the room to know that I like the cooking channel and the horror <laughs> channel at the same time. You know, it's like, oh, what was that? What was that channel Emily was watching the other day? Here, let me hold up a picture of her face right. <laughs> to the camera so that it will tell me what her favorite programs are. You know, oh, I want to buy her a gift of a DVD of one of her favorite shows. Hold up a picture. <laughs> tell me what she likes. TV. Tell me what she likes. <laughs> Not doing it. Not doing it. Uh, the the big thing that was announced that I really like um, is we had talked about this before but I think as a rumor uh, but Walmart has actually announced that they will be offering that uh, rip to the cloud service uh, oh. that we talked about so if you have a, a DVD or a Blu-ray uh, you should be able to put it in your computer at home go to uh, their, their online streaming service the Vudu 
vudu.com and uh, unlock a online cloud copy of those movies um, and the price will be two dollars to get the same movie so if you have it on DVD you'll get the SD if you have it on blu-ray you'll get the HD version or if you have the DVD you can pay five dollars to upgrade to the HD version of it what do you guys uh, think of that I, I kind of like this idea but aren't, isn't it buying what you already have, though? Yeah, but for yeah, $2, that's, that's less than I a rental. Know. That, that's where that they get That is true. You. It's just $2. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. I don't know. Like For some of the films that I like, to be able to get that extra copy for just $2 more, you know? Like, yeah, and I, I have to say, I, I do like Vudu. I think they have the best video quality of all the services so far. So in that sense, you know, giving $2 or $4 for the HD cloud version, I wouldn't mind doing that. But, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, for me, the downside is that I do this. Now I have a Voodoo copy, but I already rent and stream and buy things on Amazon. So right. now I have to go to Amazon. And, like, oh, was that movie, did I buy that on Amazon or is that a Voodoo copy? And then right. you got to check two different places. Soon I'm just going to have to have, like, a day database of all the movies that I've ever bought and owned and in what format and where so that I could just be like, oh, you know, The Rescuers Down Under. Why was that the first movie that jumped to my mind? <laughs> the Rescuers the Down rescuers Under? Down. The sequel to the animated The Rescuers? Wow. Oh, wow. You uh, have been but, sick. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But I would type that in it would say, you know, oh, go to Voodoo for that. You know, that's a little bit of an inconvenience, I'm sure. Uh, but in order to kind of hype this up and get people anticipate uh, in anticipation for this, uh, you see that if you create or log into your Vudu account, they're going to give you ten free movies. I did not see that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so you just for like creating, it. just creating a Vudu account. Essentially. Yeah, I I think I already had sweet. a Vudu account. Um, let me see if I can find the. Find the deal again that we man. If that's the case, I'll uh, I'll go set up a Voodoo account. Sign yeah, up right now. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty so sure I, I can get the rescuers down under. Yeah. <laughs> and I just uh, I just logged into. It. You have to. It's like, it's it was kind of annoying because you have to go to uh, Voodoo and say sign in using or like you got to ultraviolet and you sign in using Facebook and then you have to create a Voodoo account or log into Good your Voodoo Lord. account and like uh. tie everything together. But the thing is on the Facebook thing, you just say show posts only to me. And it's uh it's fine. I think you can also create an account there. I I just chose it because I'm lazy. Um, but let's see. You get Big Trouble in Little China, which to me <laughs> is worth it just for that. That's one. a great movie, you know. And then um, you get nine other movies <laughs> <laughs> along with it. Let's see, you get uh, Lethal Weapon, uh, The Perfect Storm, which was oh. far from a perfect movie. That was, that was a horrible <laughs> film. Uh, behind em Enemy Lines, uh, Never Been Kissed, The Producers, Psycho, The Siege, Valentine's Day, and Wrong Turn 2, colon, Dead End. Ah, very good horror film. Is it? I know, eh, you know, it's... What, I maybe spoke too soon. It's, it's not... I wouldn't say it's a very good horror film, but it's a good addition to that franchise. <laughs> but it is a horror film. <laughs> it is a horror film. <laughs> that I can say with all uh, assuredness. So yeah, get your free uh, voodoo movies, whether you watch them or not. I don't know. I'd I'd like to watch uh, something sometime online, and why not have one of ten f movies that I've barely seen? Now, can you pay ninety nine ninety nine and upgrade to the four K version of those movies? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> For only twenty five thousand dollars, you can upgrade, upgrade all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other big thing, this one is, is something that you found, Lewis, uh, and, and, and I, I find it an interesting thing uh, that was mentioned at CES. This is NVIDIA wants to get into the gaming realm. Now, NVIDIA creates, of course, video cards, so everyone who is a hardcore computer gamer knows the name NVIDIA, but they're going to do hardware now, is that? Right. This is a huge, uh, it's a huge story, I think, actually. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so they announced, I believe, let me just look at it real quick. The name of it is, Pro it's called Project Shield. Mm. Uh, it, it's an Android-based um, gaming handheld that's using NVIDIA's Tegra 4 uh, chip, which they just announced, wow. um, and yeah, I mean they're they're going into you know they're they're going for like the PS Vita, they're going for um you know the Nintendo what is it 3DS or whatever yeah. it's right now, mm -hmm. so they're they're making the hardware you know, and I was like wow I I can't believe Nvidia is jumping into the portable gaming handheld market because that's pretty gutsy of them. It is know. gutsy. See, if you ask me, I think that market's kind of dead. Yeah. Well, maybe not maybe not dead, but it's just not. 
there's nothing to it, you know, right. and for them to jump in and for them. And another interesting thing that they said is that they mentioned that, you know, they haven't mentioned the price of it yet of the, <laughs> yeah. of the actual handheld, right. but they did say that Project Shield won't be sold at a loss, right. which to me is a way of saying this is going to be expensive, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Exactly. Five ninety nine ninety nine. Exactly. Yeah. You can look at this from one of two ways and say, oh, they're going to find a way of making it cheaper and it's, and you know, not sell it at a loss. No. They're going to get, they're going to make sure they make their money, <laughs> no. and it's coming out of your pocket. You know, I mean, I, I guess it kind of does make sense. In the past, we have talked about uh, you know portable games being relegated mostly to phones and tablets these days. And who's making phones and tablets, video, graphic, all-in-one chips? Nvidia, you know, with their with their Tegras and and whatnot. So it kind of makes sense. They're already putting together CPUs for other people. Why not just? You know, right. outsource a screen and slap it on there, and some molded plastic and slap it on there. But the fact that they're going to stick to the "we're not going to lose money on this," to me, kind of means that it's probably going to cost six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred dollars. It right. would have and to be that, a pretty amazing I, system, I would imagine, for them to slap that kind of that kind of price tag on. Because I can't see Nvidia putting all that money into marketing and research to come out with a handheld console and then price themselves out of the market. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and if you if you think that if it's going to be Android based, even though the Ouya is going to supposed to have like a, you know, big leading titles, you know, like hardcore gaming titles, maybe they're going to go that route for it, but mm. the majority of games that you think about when you think of the Android uh, platform, 99 cent games, you know, who's going right. to want to pay $700 for something that plays 99 cent games, you know, maybe right. that maybe that landscape is changing and and you know in a year's time when this comes out or whatever, we'll think differently about it. But yeah, yeah. it's actually coming out um, Q2 of this year, so oh. I mean, it's ready to go. It's ready to wow. go. It's oh as ready boy. to go as you could as it could be. You know? <laughs> wow, wow. So they they already have this in production somewhere. Yeah. So it, it, it looks must... like they have their game plan. Uh, no pun intended. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they already know what they're doing. I guess it's just a matter of like you know, here's the announcement at CES. To trying to maybe like gauge how the media reacts to it. And then say like, all right, here it is. Here's the price. You know, I think it's all cloud gaming. It's a five-inch screen. I mean, it looks like an Xbox controller with a yeah. built-in LCD, essentially. Hmm. Um, you know, I think they say it's running Jelly Bean, Android Jelly Bean, and you can wow. pretty much do whatever you whatever you could do on an Android tablet. You should be able to do on the Project yeah. Shield. Yeah. Um, see, that just that just worries me because. You know, Why not just get a tablet? <laughs> yeah, you know, if it's going to cost as much as a tablet, get a tablet, you know. Yeah, you don't have the joystick controls. It's not as easy to use and whatever. But, you know, to pay that much, portable gamers, people who play portable gaming, aren't used to paying, right? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't think that uh, the PlayStation Portable is like $700 or even $600, right? right. right? And they're like, no, no. maybe like two ninety nine, three ninety nine, something like that. Well, here's the thing. If NVIDIA is getting into the market, obviously they, what I would imagine anyway, or what I make up, is that they are going to push video quality because that's their that's their mm -hmm. gig is just, is video, right. obviously. Yeah. But man, I'm telling you, I, I mean, I got a Kindle Fire HD for Christmas, which I love, by the way, oh, and it plays 99% of, uh, of my Android game apps that I got from Amazon. And sure. so... The picture quality is amazing, so I can't imagine them coming out with a handheld console that was going to be more than a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, right. unless yeah. unless I'm absolutely off base, but I mean, well, it's it's Nvidia, and they've got the horsepower to do it. You know, uh, Amazon has said that they um, make no money on their their uh, consoles. Right. So, well, on their tablets. So actually, that that could make sense then if they are like not making a cent. How much does the 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 Kindle HD Fire go for? Like uh, one ninety nine with special with special. Oh, off, that, and that then like, what is it? Is it two fifteen or two seventeen without? Hmm. Yeah. So let's say what? let's say one ninety nine. But I mean, like, my guess is this Nvidia thing is going to cost more than one ninety nine. Mm. And that's I think it would have like, to. Yeah, and as a consumer, you're going to be like, should I buy this little handheld thingy here, right, or should right. I just go get a tablet? I could get like an Asus or a Nexus 7. I could get a, um, whatchamacallit, 
Kindle Fire HD, you right. know. Or I could even go and get the Ouya, which we know is going to be 199 and even though it connects and it's not portable, it connects to your TV, it's going to play the same caliber of games if it's running the Android OS. Right. And, you know, maybe it'll get a, you know, I don't know. Maybe you'll do that. See, this is the thing. I mean, thing. NVIDIA is not a stupid company. Right. I mean, they've been around forever. I would right. have to assume that they've done incredible market research, focus groups, studies to see what the market will bear. Yeah. And unless they just got a bunch of people in there that, you know, just want to get the free lunch and the $5 check, yeah. <laughs> you know, the people would tell them that, you know, a, a $400, $500, $600 handheld is is incredibly insane. Yeah. Yeah, unless this is, uh, they got somehow wrapped up into the, if you're not growing, you're dying uh, sort of mentality mm. and decided, like, right. well, where could we grow into? Well, we could do a gaming <laughs> handset. Should we? Mm, well, we need to grow. <laughs> you yeah. know? And then next thing you know. But see, why would they do that instead of coming out with their own tablet? Right. Why not go the tablet route? Yeah. Well, I guess you think NVIDIA, you think more gaming than you do. Well, yeah. yeah. You, you could, I know. It goes like both ways, really. Yeah. Some of the best games for PC, they start up, you know, and they have the NVIDIA thing because, you know, they run run best on NVIDIA and all that sort of right. thing. Doesn't the right. Xbox use an NVIDIA chip? I could be wrong. I don't know. I cannot remember. Or is it an AMD? I thought they, I thought they did. I'm not sure. I I, let me look here. Yeah. Give that a look. I'll so, I hope. Hopefully, I mean, yeah, we are kind of talking about them like they're just children who stumbled into the business and are like, oh, yeah, yeah, what do we want what are they do? doing? Yeah, so I'm sure they probably did some research onto this. How will it be How will it be received by people uh, that, that play handheld gaming? I don't know. I, I'm not I mean, look at, look at how the PS, uh, what is it, PS, the PlayStation Vita, look how that was received. Yeah. That debuted last CES. To my knowledge, it isn't really breaking any records. I don't. I've never seen anyone on the street or on the train or anywhere with one. And you know, I don't. I don't think it did that well, basically. Yeah. So if that didn't do so well, then it just baffles my mind why Nvidia would then want to say like, oh, let's right. go into that market. You know. Yeah. Or maybe they're just not seeing someone take the lead in that market anymore. You right. Know? Maybe they're like, you know what? Let's let's be the company that defines that market and owns it. Right. Maybe that, that could be what right. they're trying to yeah. do. Because everyone in that market now is is has been in that market for a long time. Sony and Nintendo um, are really the only two. And then the market share is going to people using tablets and smartphones. Maybe this is Nvidia's chance to say, look, there's another way, you know, follow right. me, <laughs> right. well, there's another way, the NVIDIA <laughs> way, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe it'll it'll work out, I'd like to see some of the games that are going to be on it, I mean, that's that's going to be uh, uh, the kind of thing that, that draws people in, is the titles right. that you get for right. it, you right. know, so we're going to have to see what uh, what happens there. All right, that uh, that about brings us to the end of our show, if you can believe it or what? not. We just got started. I know. Yeah, that's so, quick. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, can't, we can't even talk about the $1 Starbucks cup? Oh, um, not this time. Oh, not sad this time. news. <laughs> do you want to say something about it really quick? You can... Uh, you, it's a dollar. You, oh, you, what, I get 30 seconds? 30 seconds, go. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Starbucks is going to sell you a reusable uh, cup for a buck. No pun intended, Starbucks. <laughs> and uh, you get 10 cents off uh, every coffee that you get there. So basically after 10 visits, it pays for, pays for itself. It lasts a month, and uh, it's good for the environment, good for you. Wait, it lasts a month? <clears throat> right. Yep, that's what they said. How do they... How do they judge that? It <laughs> automatically disintegrates. <laughs> yeah, it's 30 say. days. Like, 30 days, the guy's filling up your cup and it just disintegrates. <laughs> Watch for the hot smoke. coffee lawsuits to come soon. <laughs> Hmm. So, do they make sure? I mean, I'm guessing then that there's something on the cup that says, you know, please discard after. Yeah, know, it's a, a plastic. It's like a plastic uh, cup. What? What is it made of? Because I was talking to a friend who actually bought one. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, she she felt that it was important to, uh, you know, protect sure. the environment, which yeah. we we all do. Sure. Um, yeah, what is it here? Sure, whatever. I like the way I'm saying it. Sure. Yeah, yeah whatever. sure, whatever. Yeah. Protect, protect yeah. the environment. Yeah, sure. Okay. Right. I, I, get, I have not put it in a second cup, so I can throw two out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's why they call me Landfill Ledbetter. Right. I'll show these people. Every time I see someone buy one of these, I'm going to ask for two cups, just so I can throw one out. Right. So basically, uh, yeah, what's it say here about the... Like pressed corn or something? I think it is. Pressed pressed corn. Corn. No, they have those corn. cups that are like... Like press, no. I've never no. seen those. No? Mm -hmm. 
What Your you coffee mean? might taste like corn. Yeah, <laughs> tastes like moonshine. I'll have the popcorn latte, please. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a, apparently it's a. Um, they're getting rid of the foam cups. Uh, who is? That? Oh, that's McDonald's. Yeah, yeah which is sad. What are they going to use? Because that's like I know something that doesn't kill the environment <laughs> with every sip. I mean, that's horrible. <laughs> I everyone every gave sip. up foam like decades ago, and John Juice is like, nope. Still putting in styrofoam. <laughs> you are welcome, Mother Earth. No, it doesn't say like it in this article that you guys have listed. It doesn't have the um, the end and our straws date. made out of spotted owl bone. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. Well, yeah. So it's a uh, it's a reusable cup, and I think they said that it's um, it it lasts like up to a month. Mm. But I mean, it's not going to like you know disappear on you or anything right, like that. Right, right. But. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was I was uh, pleased to see that, that that when you bring it to them, they actually give it like a, a boiling water bath first, because you just know that thing's gonna get nasty. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And if you've ever worked in in an office that has like a coffee maker or whatever, and people bring in their own mugs, um, you know, people just reuse those things day after day, ne- and they never, never wash them, them out and stuff. No. It's just like. Bleh. So yes. can only imagine after a month of bringing it into Starbucks and just be like held together with mold for the most <laughs> part, you know. <laughs> so they like they sandblast that off and then fill up your uh, your cup with it. Would you guys Would you guys do this? Would you Would you guys I, remember to bring no. a cup every time? No, we have a movie theater up here that does uh, the loyalty club where you pay like eight hundred dollars for a cup and you bring it back and you get one dollar refills or something. And it's like I never remember. We always we got one once, and it's like we go to the movies. And my wife goes, "Did you bring the cup?" Oh crap! Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then it's like eight hundred dollars for another cup, and it's just bad. Yeah, I can never remember to bring my loyalty card when I go to like the frozen yogurt place up the street. Well, that's <laughs> right, the thing. right. And that fits in my wallet. What makes you think I'm going to remember to bring a cup with me? Although, now, would you, you know, buy that, Lewis? Would you buy us a, a reusable Starbucks cup? I I think I would because there's a Starbucks literally right below my building hmm. um, yes, yeah so it'd be like I, 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 if I were to get when I'd get it for home I wouldn't get it for the office mm. because I think you know right. once you're in the office you just leave it on your desk it gets dirty at least at home I could wash it myself do whatever you know right yeah. exactly see That's but right. then if, you, if you're using it for at home use why not just make coffee at home exactly I was about you to know? say that's the next thing I was like I want to just make it at home yeah, yeah just go out and get paper cups and then throw them away <laughs> 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 I could see this being used like you leave it in your car Maybe, and when you're out on the road, Ew. you're like, "Oh, well, no, what?" They <laughs> then steal you look it. it. There's like my pennies wife, and nickels wife, in there. <laughs> it, it, it's like there's wadded up gum wrappers. <laughs> yeah. My Is wife does that. She'll like take a cup of coffee from home and like put it in the cup holder of her car, and then it'll sit there for like eight weeks, and who knows? God knows what's <laughs> growing in there well, by that well, time. I'm saying that you put it in your car, and like you, you, you know, you fill it, and then you drink it, and you dump it out, and leave it in your car for the next time. Because again, they, you know, they steam, they power clean it before oh, they fill it true. up. So okay, maybe that will remove the taste of copper pennies and <laughs> <laughs> you know, dirt and candy bar wrappers, whatever else finds its way in there. Whatever <laughs> animal made its way, made a nest in it. <laughs> wow, that's disgusting. Uh, all right, now we definitely are done. Yeah, I want to so, thank you guys so. for joining me. Thanks, Thanks Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> Listeners, we're late to today's. You sounded so sad. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks Jeff. <laughs> Listeners, for links to today's stories, Twitter feeds, blog links, and more, go to our show notes page. Also, feel free to send us feedback to podcast at dealnews.com. Um, yeah, and I left in the note saying that we're off for the next couple weeks. Oh, we are? From the. From that out last time. confuse everyone. Oh. But no, we're actually coming back next week. So I, take it, <laughs> I take it back. All right, I thought, I'm I thought maybe summit. your uh, cold medication kicked back in or something. <laughs> <laughs> sure did. I'm having a flashback to NyQuil. <laughs> I'm Jeff Summagee. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>